Hello friends, it's real good to be here. So today we're going to be clashing the sodium ion battery and the lithium ion battery. Is it an actual application that actually works? Is it something that can be used in the renewable energy space? So I've been getting a lot of comments here and there, people saying it's not an application that works, but we don't know yet. We're still, you know, still in process. A lot of um, work is still done and basically what I just want to look at is what are the differences? And um, you know lithium ion batteries are an application that we already have and sodium is something that is still you know still not as practical as we have lithium ion batteries though it's way cheaper it's more um, durable in the actual sense does not catch on fire like lithium ion batteries so what are the actual differences let's find out lithium ion batteries have long been the go-to batteries due to their dependability However, new research shows that sodium batteries will swiftly replace lithium batteries in the future. Lithium batteries have a range of disadvantages, most of which can easily be mitigated by using sodium ion batteries. And even though sodium ion batteries still have a long way to go before they can be fully commercialised, the benefits already outweigh the disadvantages posed by lithium ion batteries economically and environmentally. But can sodium batteries really replace lithium batteries? If you have ever used a smartphone, laptop, watch, drive an electric car, or used any rechargeable electronic gadget, then you have used a lithium battery at some point. Electronics use lithium ion batteries, LIBs, extensively due to their small size, high energy density, and light weight. They are excellent for a wide range of applications, but they have some significant drawbacks. The primary use with lithium ion batteries is their high manufacturing costs due to the high cost of lithium. Lithium is also present in very small amounts all around the world. Because of this, moving batteries from one place to another becomes costly, which has negative effects on both businesses and the environment. This is why the industry has been looking for alternatives. One of the newest varieties of rechargeable batteries available on the market right now is sodium ion batteries. But before they were eventually commercialised, they had previously been studied for decades. The fact that sodium is far more readily available and less expensive than lithium-ion batteries makes them an excellent substitute. Not only is lithium more expensive to produce, but it is also more scarce. While a tonne of lithium costs more than $20,000, a tonne of sodium only costs $150. The other main challenge in producing lithium is that it isn't found in its most basic form. Before it can be used, it must be separated from other elements. Because very harmful chemicals like sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid are employed in this separation process, it has a significant environmental impact. The industry has been searching for strategies to lessen this impact, however it has not been successful. Sodium ion batteries appear to be a good substitute, although the technology is still quite new. Compared to lithium ion batteries, sodium ion batteries are less energy dense and have a shorter cycle life. The lower cost and less environmental effect of sodium ion technology over lithium ion technology is one of its main advantages. However, they do not come without issues, and it is probable that they may not replace lithium ion batteries quickly enough. The lithium ion battery is composed of four main parts. The cathode is the source of the lithium ions and determines the voltage and capacity of the battery. The anode stores lithium ions during battery charging and permits electric current to pass through an external circuit. Lithium ions travel through the electrolyte, a mixture of additives, solvents and salts to get from the cathode to the anode. The final part is the separator, which is a physical barrier that divides the anode and the cathode. For an electric car with a 90 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery to go 300 kilometers on a single charge, about six kilograms of lithium equivalent is needed. Since there are about 1.2 billion automobiles on the road globally, 1.44 billion kilograms of lithium would be needed if 20% of these cars switched to electric power. It is evident from this example that finding alternative high energy batteries constructed of affordable and easily accessible materials is essential. Lithium mining also requires a lot of water, which is dangerous for an area with a lithium mine. 
the Lithium Triangle, located in South America and comprises portions of Chile, Argentina and Bolivia, holds over half of the world's lithium reserves, and one tonne of lithium requires 500,000 gallons of water. Given the volume of water involved and the fact that the majority of these areas are deserted and already very dry, this could be a serious problem. More than half of the water supply in this area has been depleted by mining, which has serious ramifications for the agricultural sector. Research also shows that fish in Nevada may be affected by mining operations up to 50 miles downstream. The extraction of lithium contaminates the air, water and soil. Recycling lithium batteries is one method of somewhat offsetting the negative effects of lithium mining. Nevertheless, it is an energy-intensive and inefficient process. Furthermore, there isn't enough study on lithium-ion battery recycling to make it a practical alternative. As a result, lithium batteries are just disposed of. While just 5% of lithium-ion batteries are recycled in the US and the EU, only 2-3% to of batteries are recycled in Australia. Similar to a lithium-ion battery, a sodium-ion battery is a rechargeable battery that transfers charge using sodium ions as opposed to lithium ions. Compared to the mining and production of lithium-ion batteries, it is substantially less expensive to produce and has a much smaller carbon footprint. Since the first research in the 1980s, sodium-ion batteries have drawn much interest due to their intriguing potential as an affordable replacement for lithium battery technology. Lithium and sodium have very comparable physical, chemical and electrochemical characteristics since they belong to the same alkaline group. Because of this, sodium ion batteries inevitably follow the successful path set by lithium ion batteries. It is clear that there are many fewer similarities between the electrode materials used in SIBs and LIBs and their corresponding performance than was previously believed, even though sodium ions and lithium ions have similar intercalation chemistry. When it comes to performance, lithium ion batteries outperform sodium ion batteries. Lithium is a more efficient energy transfer material with superior electrochemical qualities. So lithium-ion batteries work best in portable electronic devices that are often recharged. However, in applications where batteries are frequently utilised for extended periods of time, such as grid storage, where a bigger capacity is necessary, sodium-ion batteries are the best option. Grid storage with sodium-ion batteries is more affordable than with lithium-ion batteries. Since sodium ion batteries are unable to hold as much charge per unit volume due to their reduced energy density, sodium ion batteries are bigger compared to lithium ion batteries. But as technology develops, both kinds of battery sizes continue to shrink. Lithium ion and sodium ion batteries work best at around 15 and 35 degrees Celsius. Still, they both function in temperatures ranging from minus 20 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. However, extreme weather conditions are more suited for sodium ion batteries since they can withstand temperature extremes better than lithium ion batteries. Recently, there has been a lot of press coverage on lithium ion battery safety issues because of the potential for explosion and fire if not handled properly. Compared to lithium ion cells, sodium ion batteries are less prone to these kinds of malfunctions because of their safer chemistry. Additionally, they do not require cobalt a metal that is poisonous in tiny amounts and can eventually cause respiratory issues if inhaled or absorbed via the skin. The cost of batteries as a whole is 16% related to mining activities and mining for cobalt, lithium and manganese results in significant pollution from wastewater and fossil fuels. Conventional extraction methods or saltwater evaporation provide much easier access to sodium. And since it is readily harvested from salt water, it requires a fraction of the energy required. Major advancements are happening with sodium batteries to make them commercially viable. The first iteration of CATL's sodium ion battery technology was introduced in July 2021. It had an energy density of 160 watt hours a kilogram and required only 15 minutes to charge from 0 to 80%. 
the company then later filed for patent protection in January 2022 for a second generation sodium ion battery that they believed could achieve more than 200 watt hours a kilogram, surpassing the performance levels of existing conventional nickel based lithium cobalt batteries and outperforming lithium ion phosphate technology. With full adoption of sodium ion batteries expected to steadily rise by 2024, CATL hopes to deliver low-cost energy storage batteries for global power networks, as well as Tesla and other automobiles paving the way for the quick adoption of renewable energy sources. As with all these seemingly groundbreaking new announcements in the field of battery storage systems, it's crucial to keep your attention exclusively on the product's commercial viability and real-world performance rather than getting carried away with flashy marketing displays. Very many industry entrants have made very lofty claims in the past, all vying to be the next big market disruptor. However, relatively few of those plans have been implemented. Nevertheless, CATL is a rather serious company that follows through on its commitments. Sodium ion batteries may power electric cars within the next several years. I hope you actually enjoyed this and you actually learned you know, a few things from you know, watching this video. And if you've not liked and subscribed, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section what you think. What are your takes? I would love to know. All right, cheers.